Hey guys, what's up? Thanks for watching this video. And most of all, thank you for allowing me to hit the 10,000 subscriber mark. So today I was able to hit 10,000 subscribers. I've been waiting for that for years. Uh, 10,000 just feels better than 9,800 to be honest with you. But um, I'm really, really appreciative of all the support that you guys have had. Uh, for the most part, it's like 95% supportive and then 5%. Uh, well, probably 3% troll and 2% just outright hate for me. So <laughs> um, I guess those uh, statistics aren't as bad as they could be. So I don't get too much hate mail. But um, anyway, guys, thanks for uh, allowing me to reach that mark. Uh, I'm approaching a million views and, like I said, 10,000 subscribers. And those are both just you know significant numbers. I never really thought anything would come to this channel. And if you go back to some of my earliest videos, they are just absolutely terrible, some of them. Um, and I keep them around because it allows me to reflect and, and just kind of see where I was um, at, when I was a programmer back then compared to where I'm at now. And, um, you know, ultimately I can look back at just a month ago and be like, damn, I was writing some really bad code then um, or I've learned a lot over the last month. Um, and it continues to be that way even you know, after doing this for a while. Um, so I didn't want to just give a 10,000 subscriber video. I felt like it was kind of lame just to have a, a video sub surrounding just, you know, 10,000 subscribers. Um, although I'm, you know, really proud of that. Just want to give a shout out to uh, like Chris Cavanaugh, uh, Terracol, um, Tashant from uh, Kenya, and uh, Caleb. Those are all uh, supporters that have been on the channel, you know, following me for years now. And um, they've always been some of the most active supporters uh, as for as long as I've had this channel. And I definitely appreciate that. So I get a question from Yasser, and um, he wants to know, Chris, when did you start programming? And I could just give the simple answer of when I started, um, but I felt like I, I would kind of give a you know background video, just kind of um, because my story is a little bit more interesting, I think, than just saying you know the age that I started. A lot of programmers start at a very young age. Some are starting um, you know in, in what would be considered like an elderly age. I've heard of people in their 80s starting programming. So they say that you're never too old to start programming, which is good. Um, in my case, um, you know I, I didn't really uh, look into it too much you know as far as like what age I should have started programming. I think um, I was concerned when I was jumping into it because um, my story goes back to when I was 28. Um, it would have been the early part of uh 2010 and that's actually well, i'm sorry it would be early part of 2011 yeah 2011 so the beginning of 2011 actually guys i'm completely wrong it was 2009 um so the beginning of 2009 was when i actually started uh looking into programming although i didn't really start programming so i would have been 20 uh 28 around that time um, and when I started, uh, I actually wanted to build a website. So the reason why I wanted to build a website was because um, Facebook was just getting popular, and, and there was a lot of like you know media attention surrounding like uh, you know these tech startup websites. Like YouTube had just been sold to Google just a year before that. So there's all this like you know tech news out there, and I think that you know I was caught up a little bit in that. Um, but I wanted to build a, a website. Um, yeah, basically that could compete with Facebook at the time. But then my interest started changing once I started looking into web design in, early, in the early part of 2009. I was kind of playing around with like Photoshop uh, and Adobe Illustrator. And I was it was mainly just building templates and looking into like HTML, but didn't really know anything about HTML or CSS or JavaScript or any of that stuff. I barely could tell you the difference between them um, at that time. But that's where it all started. I started using these programs to kind of build up these mockups of what I wanted a, a website to look at uh, or look like. And um, it wasn't really until I didn't take it seriously at all because I wasn't really doing anything during those times. I had to work a full time job. I had a family and I would come home. And I think every once in a while I'd kind of look at you know Photoshop or look at some book or something. But uh, I wasn't really getting anything done you know, all through, you know, that spring into the summer, into the fall. And it wasn't until I actually went to a concert um, in this uh, dive of a bar, an auto bar, and uh, it's called the Auto Bar in Baltimore, Maryland, um, this little, little rundown joint. And I ended up seeing, so it's like this tiny little club, and I remember I ended up seeing my favorite band, right? So my favorite band was uh, Bayside. And this show in 2009, it was one of the best shows I've ever been to. Like, I went to Woodstock 99 uh, when I graduated high school. 
And I mean, I've seen a lot of different concerts, seen a lot of different genres of music, like uh, everything from like rap and country to you know, rock and all that stuff. And like that Bayside show for, to me was just sick because like for some reason at the age of 28, I just felt old. You know, I like I felt like with uh, where my career was at at that point, like I was kind of stuck. I didn't have a college degree. Uh, I'm not even sure I was attending college at that point. And I, I just kind of wanted to do something different. But after this Bayside show in, in um, Baltimore, Maryland, I remember, like, I, I think I got sick or something. But for, like, two days afterwards, I could, like, my ears were ringing, like, the next day and stuff like that because this show was so loud. And um, I just remember thinking, you know, I, I really want to do something different. And from that point on, that would have been November of 2009, like, I really started, you know, trying to learn programming. I really started making an effort, you know, every night to start learning it. And it kind of started off with CSS and HTML and making those templates that I was building in Photoshop into actual HTML. Um, and then it, you know, started with some basic jQuery introduction, plugin stuff like that. So that goes, you know, all into the beginning of uh, 2010. And then from there, I started actually getting into like scripting languages so that I could try to collect data because my ultimate goal was I was going to try to build a rock music website to promote bands like Bayside um, in a much better way. You know, basically, I thought I could do a better job than like a pure volume. Um, they were kind of an inspiration at the time. A lot of you guys probably never even heard of a site like that. They're not even probably in the top 10,000 websites anymore. Um but for some reason, I thought I could build a, a, a better site, and I allowed that drive and that dedication to continue to uh, carry on into 2010. So I started learning Perl to collect data on the web. Couldn't really figure that out. I would struggle really hard with that for a long time. And it wasn't until I moved to Python in probably the summer of 2012 that I started uh, – not 2012, I'm sorry, but 2011 – that I started actually making some decent progress because um, – I remember by the fall of 2011, you know, two years after this dream of making a website, like I had actually had websites at that point. Like I built this uh, new music website, which got me started. I mean, I remember I originally started with Django and I moved to web Two pi where I met some, you know, really good Python guys. Like uh, um, one guy's a professor who actually started web Two pi His name is Massimo and he's a professor at a, um, a, a university in Chicago. I can't remember the name of it. I, I'm actually friends with them on Facebook still, but um, they actually helped me a lot with getting new music off the ground. I put it in the cloud for a while in Google, uh, Google's App Engine Cloud, and then I eventually transitioned it away from from um, the Google App Engine and Web 2 Pi and ended up going back to Django. And I felt like I really I grew a lot as a programmer um, doing that and getting you know getting involved in, in the Django community quite a bit. Uh, this was my first logo. And it kind of brings back a lot of memories for my new music site. Like I ended up changing the design so many times and changing the direction of it. And I don't know, I guess it's kind of, uh, I look back on the, you know, the three years of having this web, this uh, YouTube channel and the, you know, the many years that I've been, you know, trying to build websites and program it. It's kind of, uh, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, I guess it's touching. So by like the fall of 2011, I remember I had new music up and, I was promoting it and it was getting some attention, not a whole lot. And the website wasn't very dynamic, so there wasn't a whole lot of server side stuff going on. It was a lot of you know, scrape data with Python scripts and stuff like that, and building static web pages for the most part. It was um, there was some database involvement there, but um, it certainly wasn't like some sort of dynamic database-driven website. So it was very it was noobish, you know. And that was even two years after being in the game for a while and. Um, you're just doing it at home because it, my job didn't you know have anything to do with programming and I could only do it at night and uh, when I had you know available time so there was just so much involved um, I remember by 2011 though I felt comfortable enough um, to apply for an Android programming position and I remember I, I drove all the way up to the to Washington DC from where I live in, in Virginia which is a, a pretty good drive especially because traffic sucks around here and I remember um, yeah, I went to this uh, this interview, and I mean, these people had no intention on hiring me, hiring me because I didn't have a degree and I really didn't have any you know real corporate experience either. And then my websites that were up weren't you know all that you know they weren't all that awesome, I guess. You know, they look good, but they they I had no skills basically to get hired as an Android Java uh, developer. I barely knew Java, and um, probably had no business interviewing for it and I guess it kind of sucks that I even drove up there 
and wasted my time. But I remember that was kind of my low point from, you know, trying to change my career. So two years after this, you know, fateful concert, you know, that, that motivated me to build this website, um, you know, I had been shut down. And I think that was like the third time I had been declined for a job at that point. And I had pretty much told myself driving back from D.C. that, you know, I was going to give up, give it up. And it sucks because, you know, I was a father at the time and, you know, I had a wife and um, still have a wife, still married, still have kids. <laughs> but um, I remember like I was just thinking like, you know, I've wasted you know two years now and it's just not going to happen. And I was honestly like really close to giving it up, like all of it and just kind of moving on and, and maybe trying to do something different. And luckily I didn't because. Um, the next year going into the beginning of, uh, 2012, uh, it was about April of 2012. And I still, I hadn't, you know, interviewed for any other positions after that. Cause the job, a job interview was just a, a disaster. And, um, I ended up, uh, I ended up going back to a Bayside concert, which was crazy. So it was like this free, to, uh, free concert that they put on and in Baltimore again and um after the concert I actually got to you know talk to the lead singer which was really cool this, this guy uh, Anthony Ranieri and I remember I was telling him about the website and I was like yeah we named our dog after your band and all this stuff and like and I was telling him about this website and I'm like man I, you know for somebody who isn't a real programmer you know in a day job still considers himself to be a programmer at night you know what I mean like I wasn't officially a programmer but I considered myself to be one because at that point I had already started a web company and I had several websites, including new music that was still up. And I still, you know, was working on different ways that I was going to, you know, expand it and prove everybody wrong eventually. And he was like telling us, hey, that's cool. That's awesome. And, you know, he, we were just fans to him or whatever. But um, it was still, I think, meaningful because I ended up going back to the drawing board and I ended up building a um, a blog that had nothing to do with new music. But it was a blog that ended up getting a ton of traffic um, going all through the summer and into August. And at that point I had enough confidence again to reach out to a hiring manager. Um, and I, I basically told him like my whole history about, you know, web design being self-taught, you know, motivated to learn all this stuff. And um, I told him about Python and my, my data scraping projects and all this stuff. Cause at that point I was pretty good at data manipulation and data crunching and, and they were interested in, and I actually got hired right off. And like, I got brought in as like a beginner level programmer, um, mainly f focusing on just UX where I was just going to be like a, you know, a UI, mainly just JavaScript, CSS, you know, HTML kind of person, like a, basically a, a front end web, de uh, web developer. And from there, I just kind of took that opportunity and ran with it. Now I'm a senior programmer. I've been in enterprise development for three years now. Uh, I still run websites at home, still get involved in technology. Obviously, I do this channel, and I try to stay up to date with you guys and new programming trends and stuff like that. But um, it's a pretty crazy story, I guess, because uh, I, you know I could have given it up after being turned down several times, which I know you guys have been turned down before. A lot of, a lot of you guys that are self-taught have questions about how you get your foot in the door and I don't think anybody has the exact answer for you for in my case um you know I got declined a, a lot of times and I you know I may have gotten lucky with getting my foot in the door and um I still consider myself you know fortunate to be in this industry one of the things um I will mention is that I, I was going to college at the time uh for you know an associate's degree in business administration so I have never taken a computer science course but at the same time it's not like I wasn't trying to pursue a degree so I think just simply pursuing and, and being able to tell a prospective employer that um, you are actually working on that degree, you know, working on bettering your, yourself is it's going to help you a lot. Even if you don't have the degree, I think even just taking some courses is probably going to help you if you have a hard time trying to to find a job somewhere. So that's about it, guys. I mean, I started at 28, didn't land a job till about 30 or 31, I guess, 31. Um, and. Now I've been in the enterprise development world for three years, and I think it's I think it's a great industry to be in. So it definitely, um, if you guys are thinking about becoming programmers, don't you know don't don't give that thought up. You know, keep keep trying. It's going to be a lot of hard work, especially if you're not going for that degree. And you know, hopefully you guys don't give up when you're told that you're not good enough or that you know you just don't have the experience. And um, just keep working on that experience. There's a lot more ways of, of getting the education now with the internet. You can learn stuff online. That you, there's free tutorials. Um, 
There's even free certifications. You can certainly host your own projects on GitHub. You can contribute to open source projects. You can write your own jQuery plugins and all that stuff. I mean, you can do so much stuff to try to get your name out there uh, as a developer. Maybe just even answering questions on Stack Overflow to try to not just help your, yourself but help others. And um, you could start a YouTube channel like this. Um, and there's, you just you know do whatever you need to do to try to you know keep up to date and and you know just trying to better yourself each and every day. And I think eventually it, it would definitely um you would it would work. Eventually you'll get that job. But guys, thanks for the the 10,000 subscribers. Like I said, I, I really appreciate that. It's been a three year journey on this channel. Looking back on my older videos, it's funny. Um, I was very you know immature in, in a lot of them and uh, definitely a terrible programmer at times. And um, I don't know. It's just funny. But anyway, guys, uh, thanks. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Bye.